Without God's law of love, families, churches, and even nations fall apart. It may not be the most popular message today, but it is true. If you destroy God's law, everything begins to break down. And that's what we see happening in the United States today. On this episode of The Trumpet Daily, we look at the U.S. Constitution and the law on which it was originally based. The Philadelphia Church of God presents The Trumpet Daily. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Trumpet Daily. More than 200 years ago, America's forefathers set out to establish a new nation. A nation, as Abraham Lincoln said, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. It was an altogether new experiment in the world. A nation for the people, ruled by the people, but under God. Now the Europeans didn't think it would work. They believed it could only end in anarchy and eventual ruin. Were they right? Is the grand American experiment about to fail? Today on The Trumpet Daily, we bring you another segment from my father's weekly program, The Key of David, about the Constitution of the United States. Did you know that our founding fathers made a terrifying prophecy about the U.S. and its Constitution? And almost nobody, it seems, pays any attention to that. But they said, if you don't maintain, if we don't maintain our uh, our strong biblical religion and our strong private morality based on the Bible, that the Constitution would be destroyed. It will not work. Did you know they made that prophecy? It was really based on the Bible. But why is it nobody pays much attention to that at all today. Why is that? What's the problem? Well, now I can certainly prove to you that America has degenerated grossly since the time of the Founding Fathers. I think anybody can prove that by the standard of the Bible. And I can say to you, and I believe this is true, that we have already destroyed 95% of our Constitution, and I can prove that to you from... uh, what the Founding Fathers said, and what is happening today. I can prove it to you, and I absolutely believe the Founding Fathers, if they were here, would agree with what I'm telling you. But there is good news. There is good news because the Founding Fathers were blessed mightily because of their beliefs in God and the Bible, and so will you be if you follow what they did. Follow that truth of God that they we're much more passionately into than we are today. I mean, far more. But I think we understand that the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And what is going to happen if you remove the law or reject the law of the land? It doesn't take a lot of uh, judgment or wisdom to know that we're going to descend into violent anarchy and destructive chaos. So you can see why the Founding Fathers were so concerned and why they were uh, really very prophetic. So they made a strong prophecy. Now you can see if you look at the Bible, just read 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 5, and it says that religion today is just a form of godliness, just a form of it, just a ritual compared to what it should be. And it it says in those verses that we are without natural affection. We don't have natural affection toward our children. We don't have natural affection toward husband and wife, toward people in general. That's what that scripture says. And without natural affection for our children, well, that means they're going to suffer and suffer and suffer. And if you look at some of the public court trials we're having today, you know that something is terribly wrong with our family, with our affection for one another. Something is wrong 
with America and it has everything to do with making the Constitution work or causing it not to work. It has everything to do with that. Now this is something we need to study for ourselves. We need to study the Constitution and we need to study the Bible and see how much that Constitution was based on the Bible it, itself. Now again, the Founding Fathers made a deadly prophecy saying if you don't keep that strong biblical morality and religion, the Constitution will be destroyed. How close are we to fulfilling that prophecy? I want to read you some, something to you here from Angelo Codvilla. The title of his book is The Character of Nations. So I want to read this to you. And here's what the first two presidents said about the family. Quote, in short, the Founders' generation believed that men's and women's interests were complementary, and they saw marriage as the divinely ordained, naturally good way to organize life. George Washington had started his presidency by pointing out that public life must be grounded on private morality. His successor, John Adams, devoted uh, husband of Abigail, was even more specific he said the, quote, foundation of national morality must be laid in private families. And he went on to say that children learn the meaning of morality, religion, and respect for law from the habitual fidelity of their parents to one another. Look, that's, those are pretty strong words. Those men really believed in the biblical family. They believed it and tried very hard to live it and did a far better job than we do today because all around us, we're, if you just look, and I think if you're honest with yourself, you see there is a breakdown in our families, not only in America, but in Britain and in, in uh, the Jewish nation in the Middle East and other nations as well. What is going on and what does it mean? Well, it was all prophesied and even our founding fathers knew it would happen because they knew the Bible. That's why they could make such a prophecy. But the Constitution was uh, created only for strong biblical families. That's what it gets down to. Where did they get these views? Well, they got them from the Bible. Let me read one scripture here that ties in with this. A few verses in Matthew 19, verse 1 through 5, And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, He departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea, beyond Jordan, and great multitudes followed Him, and He healed them there. So He was healing a lot of people, and multitudes were following Him around. Verse 3, The Pharisees also came unto Him, tempting Him, and saying, unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? That God made them at the beginning male and female? And it's in the context of marriage. Verse 5, And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. He made them. God made them, male and female, so that they could be married. And He told the man to cleave to that woman like you'd cleave to a hand uh, that's saving you from drowning. Just cleave to her. And be, both of you become one flesh. Now that's, that's profound. One flesh. Just become one. Two people become one. A male and a female become one. Now that's what he's talking about. Verse 6, I mean that's pretty obvious I think to anybody. Verse 6 says, Wherefore they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. From the beginning, that's not what God intended, but uh, he, uh, Moses did allow them to divorce and separate. You know why? Because of the hardness of their hearts. 
That's what your Bible says. That's what Jesus Christ said in His own words when He was on this earth. It's because of that hardness that we divorce and we separate and uh, it wrecks families and causes children to suffer and suffer and suffer. And how many books have been written proving that very fact? How many? Well, the breakdown of the family means the breakdown of the Constitution as far as it working. That's what John Adams was talking about. And I, I tell you, the whole world can see the breakdown of our families. We show it to them on television and in these court cases and all kinds of court trials that just show such dysfunctional families. You can hardly believe it. Now, what does that portend for our future? What does that, what does that mean as far as the Constitution's effectively working? What does it mean? What does it mean to you? What does it, do we see what is happening to us? Do we see and understand what's really happening? If you think marriage is something to take lightly, we, we, we really should think that and, uh, again and do a lot of study into our Bibles. Uh, notice what it says in Revelation 19 and verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and His wife has made herself ready. The first fruits, those called out today before Christ comes, are going to be the ones that actually marry Jesus Christ. Marriage is a type of our marriage to Jesus Christ. And then we'll go out and help God the Father uh, bring in the rest of the of human beings by through a resurrection and other ways. And then the family of God will, will be built from that. That is the whole purpose of God's uh, uh, plan. That's the gospel. is bringing all of mankind into God's family. And the marriage, the physical marriage, is a type of our marriage to Jesus Christ, and it's a God-plain relationship. God-plain. Nothing could be more exalted than that, that uh, marriage and family. And we ought to be just utterly ecstatic to be a part of it. But you know it's just been drugged down. That, that institution has been drugged down into the gutter today because of the hardness of our hearts. Something is wrong with human beings. And they need to have that hardness removed. Now this applies to the church as well as nations. I want to read you something here about our earliest history and the kind of people that our founding fathers were working with. The uh, famous British historian Paul Johnson wrote this article, No Law Without Order, No Freedom Without Law. It was printed in the Sunday Telegraph, December 26, 1999, and I want to read you a paragraph from that. He said, both in Virginia and New England, you can see that all these people that came to this country were persecuted and really under tyrannies in many ways, and they were just yearning for freedom, for freedom of religion, to worship God the way they wanted to worship God. And so here's what Paul Johnson wrote, both in Virginia and in New England, to the north, the colonists were determined God-fearing men, Mr. Johnson wrote, often in search of a religious toleration denied them at home who brought their families and were anxious to farm and establish permanent settlements. They put political and religious freedom before riches, and thus took shape the economic dynamo that eventually became the United States, an experiment designed to establish the rule of God on earth. Now, that was the experiment. They wanted to establish the rule of God on this earth. That's how it all began. 